Thanks for tuning in to the 3D Tutor. Hey guys and welcome to this specular mapping tutorial. So where we left off last time was creating the diffuse map, making sure it was the right size and bringing it into 3ds Max and applying it onto a one poly or two tri plane. Um, when I say two tri, I mean two triangle plane. And what we're going to do now is we're going to be going in and adjusting this so that it is a specular map. So we're going to go into file, we're going to save as, and we're going to save it over. Uh, I've already got a specular there. So if you haven't, make sure you set the file name as whatever you want to call it with a specular at the end. So, you know, with the diffuse, we called it diffuse with the specular or a spec map. You want to make sure you call it specular. I'm going to hit save. Yes, I want to replace it and set the quality of the file up to 12. Next, what we're going to do is desaturate the image, make it black and white. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can go to image mode, um, grayscale. You can go to adjustments, black and white, or you can go to desaturate. So whichever one you want to go for, it doesn't really matter. But what I prefer doing is go to adjust adjustments, image adjustments and desaturate. So it's control shift and U as a shortcut. Uh, once you're in here, we want to go to level. So press control L to bring up the levels. You can also access the levels through image adjustments and levels, but control L is a pretty uh, nifty shortcut to know. We're going to actually make this brighter. So we're going to drag this area up. So the right node just here needs to go about, I don't know, a third or a quarter of the way up. And then we're going to drag down the one on the far left as well. So what, what this is going to do is it's going to push down the darks and it's also going to lift those whites as well. So the specular, if I explain how a specular works, anywhere where it's black, it means that light is not going to reflect or bounce from that area. Anywhere where it's lighter, light is going to bounce from that part of the surface. So as you can see here, light's not going to really bounce from the sort of grouting or the concrete in between the tiles, which is good. We don't want that to bounce light, but on the actual um, paving itself, it's going to be bouncing light off certain areas and a little less on certain. So it's going to look quite cool because it's going to, you know, give you that kind of textured surface uh, look just from the way that the light that the light is going to bounce off it. So we can kind of make this really extreme if you choose to, to do that. So we can kind of go like that, but that's probably going to be too much. So I'm going to tone this down. I'm going to bring this in as well a little bit. Maybe something like that will be okay. So I'm going to leave it like that for now. Again, I can always come back and tweak these things if I if I choose to. I'm going to save that as, and I'm going to again just make sure it's saved as a uh, as a specular. In fact, we don't need to save as because we've already saved the file as a specular just a moment ago. So just hit Control S or just File and save, and then it'll uh, save it as the specular. Okay, so that's your specular done. What we're going to then do is go into 3 Max. We're going to go to the material editor once more by pressing the M key. And then we're going to go down to the specular level. So this is within the maps heading again. So under maps, you're going to go to specular level, click none, go to bitmap, and we're going to open up the specular texture. Okay, I'm going to go to parent. And what you'll notice is there's no change whatsoever on the actual surface of this uh, object. That's because currently we're only showing the diffuse map in the viewport. What we need to do is we need to go to material in the material editor, go to show materials in viewport as, and then realistic materials with maps. So click onto that. We'll take just a second. And you'll, what, what you'll notice then is that you'll notice that light actually shines off there. Now, one thing that we straight away need to change because every part of this is uh, shining is having light bounce. We don't really want that. We want to actually tone this down. So we we'll change the glossiness up to about 40. So it's a little bit less. And also what we need to do is we need to add a light into this scene. Now I do have a tutorial which talks you through how to add lighting into a scene. Uh, it's called Soft Shadows Using Mental Ray uh, Lighting, I believe, something like that. Um, and But anyway, I'll show you how to add a really quick light and what we need to do. So we're going to go on the Create tab, go to Lights, click onto Free Light, hit Yes on this dialog box and add the light sort of at a corner or just past the corner just there. Now it's going to look really weird um, at first because the light is at a really kind of sharp angle. So as you start lifting, you kind of notice what it looks like. You know, it's not really right, is it? So what we're going to do is we're going to lift this light even further. And what you'll notice is that 
that specular is working perfectly. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go into the modify. What I like to do is go to modify, change the um, light shape to a sphere and then we're going to go all the way up and turn shadows on. Now this won't make a difference now but it's going to be set up for later when we add the bump map which uh, will really help to kind of push the depth uh, of these tiles uh, or of this paving. So you can see there the specular is working okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that off for a second you can see the difference there's absolutely no light shine on there no light bounce and if I turn it on you see the difference there so like night and day um, you can increase the glossiness if you want to kind of um, exaggerate the effect a little bit and it does look quite nice rather than having it all the way down where everything is shiny which is absolutely ridiculous it doesn't you know in real world it doesn't look that way so you want to make sure you kind of make it look as realistic as possible if you're using an older 3ds max and you don't get the uh, option to make your materials realistic in viewport you will have to just press f9 to render this out really quickly and that will give you like a preview of what it looks like um, and that should be a good way of you sort of just seeing what it looks like so you don't have to waste time on it uh, and then finding out that it doesn't actually work so just pressing f9 will do a quick render uh, and it will give you the effect uh, in your render window Okay, so hopefully you've enjoyed that tutorial guys. Um, one last thing actually, if you want to adjust the specular level, you can increase it and it will just make it pop a little bit more, a little bit more light bounce. But if you go really, really crazy, you know, it will start looking odd. So make sure you don't go too high with that. Um, subtlety is the key. So what we're going to do, I'm going to leave that about 100 actually and leave the tutorial there guys so stay tuned for the bump map tutorial which kind of concludes um, this series of tutorials may also do a normal map actually just to show you the difference between a bump and a normal um, but yeah guys I'll catch you next time